First filmmakers simply photographed what interested or amused them. They held a shot until they got bored. Or the film ran out. The fathers of cinema, Edison in the United States and the Lumiere brothers in France, were very pessimistic about the future of cinema. There was probably a worldwide interest in seeing these images move, but once you'd seen somebody playing a joke with a hose, why pay money to see something that you can see for real out in the street? In fact, Auguste Lumiere went as far as to say that cinema was an invention without a future. But Edwin Porter, one of Thomas Edison's employees, proved him wrong. Porter discovered that cutting separate shots together could create a story. Edwin S. Porter really was the one with the life of an American fireman, I think, that started into, into, into cutting um, and creating an emotional impact in the audience with, by intercutting two shots that, have, that are not related to each other. One scene is going on at one place. Basically, the firemen rushing to a fire with their horse-drawn wagons. And the other scene is the fire, miles away. You intercut the two, and you understand psychologically and emotionally that these people's lives are in danger, and these people are coming to rescue them, and you, you're rooting all of a sudden for that to happen, and you're hoping they save the people. I often think about what it must have been like to be there to create the art form as it was happening and say, why don't we try this? Oh, that, that, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, we do it in the editing room now. We cut to something, so, well, that doesn't work. Well, imagine what they must have said in 1904. The Great Train Robbery was Porter's next film. That's when you really begin to see the possibilities. And I'm not saying this because I'm an editor, but the invention of editing is the thing that allowed film to take off. It's the equivalent of the invention of flight. Both human-powered flight and motion picture editing were invented in the same year, and they have similar kinds of effects. D.W. Griffith was the first great filmmaker to understand the psychological importance of editing. Working a decade after Porter, he did more than anyone else to advance the storytelling tools Porter had developed. Griffith invented and popularized techniques that established the basic grammar of film. His melodramas were the first to draw audiences into the emotional world of his characters. He certainly was the first man to use the close-up in a big way. This was revolutionary. It was so revolutionary that the producers, when they saw this, were aghast. They thought, you can't put this picture out like this. You can't cut to this big, ugly shot of somebody. First of all, we're paying for this actor, this actress. We want to see their whole body. We don't want to just see their face. Second of all, the audiences won't know what to respond to. They're going to be all confused. Well, the proof is in the pudding, and the reality is that the audiences were not confused at all. Griffith brought it together in one magnificent film, Birth of a Nation, and we saw the accumulation of sort of 10 years of editing knowledge put into a movie. And all of a sudden, you had not only had close-ups, but you had flashbacks. parallel action, and you had all sorts of things that he used to make the audience, his attention focused on a certain part of the frame. The Russian Revolution sparked a revolution in film editing as well. The crazy uh, Russians started fucking around with images, all right, and juxtaposing them and creating different emotional effects. Lenin saw film as the perfect medium to inspire his largely illiterate nation to join the revolution. They took these films out in the middle of uh, farmlands and showed it to the farmers and the peasants. They began to understand that they could get a certain emotional, psychological effect by a certain type of cutting from one image to the next. And that became a manipulation of what the audience was feeling. The Russian filmmakers rejected the bourgeois stories and seamless editing practiced by Griffith. Instead of melodrama, they offered real life. To make the film Man with a Movie Camera, documentary filmmaker Ziga Vertov and his team took his cameras into the streets to record a typical day in Moscow. It's constantly reminding me that I'm watching a movie. There are scenes inside an editing room. 
You see how they edited movies back in 1929. They were engaged in a pure explosion of creative activity in manipulating these images. Every modern editing convention that we know of is demonstrated in Man with the Movie Camera. The film celebrated not just the revolution, but the role of the cameraman and the editor in helping to create it. Vertov and his wife, Elisaveta, cut their documentaries and newsreels in dark basements with rats scuttling underfoot. But in this film, he made the editor as important as any other worker in the revolution.